Hello there once again and welcome to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're here every week meeting interesting people and dealing with topical issues. And today we welcome back one of our more frequent guests on the show. Yeah, Dr. Marianne Bowman, the award-winning doctor, as you'll hear about uh, as we get into the show, is back for her 13th appearance with us, with us on The Verdict, and we're really thrilled to have her back. She can discuss just about any health issue that you might be considering. and. Uh, Kent and I learn something every time she comes in for a visit. We're excited about today's show. It's Dr. Marianne Bowman back again on The Verdict. We'll be right back. My path is different from the prototypical receivers. The namesake himself, Mr. Welcome. Not recruited out of high school, not drafted into the NFL. I'm not the fastest guy. I'm not that big. He's the model of perseverance. He finds a way to make a way. So let's have some fun today, huh? We're gonna play hard, we're gonna play tough. He focuses on the kids that are not quite as fortunate as everyone else. Right. Way to go, Taylor. The Boys and Girls Clubs, the Youth Football League. The 80% of them are from single parent home, so they hear a lot of negative stuff every day. I think the coolest thing for us has been putting in this weight room right here at Douglas. It's made our kids want to be involved more and more. Seeing them have losing seasons year after year. Next year, they win state. For a company like Chesapeake to recognize the mission of the West Welcome Foundation, it tells me that they're committed to helping people. My greatest hope and dream for these kids to go out and conquer everything they want. Hopefully we can push them in the right direction. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. Wilsey, Meyer, Eatman, Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers, and Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Today we're really pleased to welcome back The Verdict's doctor, Dr. Marianne Bowman. There are a lot of shows claim her, but we'll claim her as well. Uh, Dr. Bowman uh, got her MD degree from Wayne State University in Detroit, and in 1991 she came to Oklahoma, and joined at that time Baptist Hospital, now Integris. She is the uh, director of the Women's Center. Uh, she is an author, a TV uh, personality, and has uh, been uh, on the show a number of times. I think this is her 13th appearance. <clears throat> Most importantly to her uh, uh, patients, she is board certified in internal medicine and carries on an active uh, medical practice as well as her speaking. Uh, Marianne, glad to have you back. Wonderful to be here. Thank Always you for glad. having me. And I understand congratulations are in order. The American Heart Association has bestowed you with an award. Can you tell us a little bit yes, more about it? Thank you very much. I am thrilled. American Heart Association has made me the 2012 Physician of the Year. Um, and this is a national award wow. uh, given to a practicing physician. You've got to be practicing, but giving to a practicing physician who really moves the mission along of the American Heart Association. Mm -hmm. So it's quite an honor, and I am thrilled. Well, congratulations. Thank well, you. Well, you certainly do advance the conversation about wellness, and, and especially as it, as it pertains to, uh, to cardiovascular uh, help. What's the message? What they, uh, I don't think necessarily people can, can hear it often enough. In, in general, what should people be doing? Heart disease, there are so many preventable risk factors. I mean, that's the thing that we try to get this message across. Um, there, there, we call it the Life Simple 7. You know, uh, the things with diseases are if you have high blood pressure, keep it under control. Keep your cholesterol under control. If you have diabetes, keep it under control. But then there are the lifestyle things. Quit smoking. You know, there's no benefit to the smoking. Uh, eat better. Uh, more fruits and vegetables. Uh, lose weight if you need to. 
exercise, get your body moving. And I know you're a big enthusiast for both of those things, uh, the watching the weight and the exercise. And I know, Kent, you're exercising regularly as well. These are things that can help to prevent these devastating diseases. So how are we doing in Oklahoma? We're not doing well. <laughs> now, we, we've, we've had your million pound campaign, mm -hmm. which has really been helpful and beneficial. I had a patient the other day who said, I decided that I was going to join the mayor's plan. <laughs> so I was very happy with that. Um, but you know, we are a fast food capital. Uh, we drive everywhere. We're just working. I'm, with the, I'm on the board of the Community Foundation working on the uh, paths for walking and with the schools. So we walk, we don't walk everywhere. We, we take our cars and we eat a lot of fast food. And we're busy, so people are eating out. They're not cooking meals at home. There's a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. Was this award, uh, pre congratulations, by the Thank way, you. was this award presented to you in person at a, at a meeting or something, or did you just hear about it? Um, I was notified of it a few months ago, and then it will actually be presented at a national meeting um, at, at the end of uh, January, uh, at the end of June. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Where will the meeting be? It'll be down in Dallas. That's where the national headquarters are for the American Heart Association, and that's where they do the meetings and the award ceremony. Where are we in trying to get the, the pharmaceutical industry to be helpful with dealing with obesity? Are we, are we close to some sort of magic pill that will make all those calories go away? I wish we were. And you know, we Americans want magic. Yeah. You know, we'd rather <laughs> pop pills than eat better and exercise. We'll, we'll eat our vegetables in a pill before we'll actually cook them and eat them, you know. And it's so interesting because the studies show that, that doing it that way just doesn't work as well. And so uh -huh. I don't, I, I think there are definitely pharmaceuticals working on it, but I don't think we have yeah. that magic pill. And you know, there was a very interesting study recently which has raised a lot of concern and interest and that is this study showed that people who take a lot of vitamins mm -hmm. actually have a higher death rate, higher mortality rate than people who don't. And well, nobody knows mean? nobody knows quite what that is, but it has to do, you know, sometimes people will come in and they're taking ten or fifteen um, minerals, vitamins, all of this kind of a thing. And they they looked at these people, they looked at their ages, their weights, other diseases, and they still found an increased risk of death. We don't really know what it means, but what it does say again is eat your fruits and vegetables to get your antioxidants. Mm -hmm. Do it in the healthy, the right way, and you're better off. Mm -hmm. I've noticed some of the fast food restaurants, you know, at least having better choices available. You know, you can go to Subway now and, and get the apples. Yeah. You can go to McDonald's now, and instead of the French fries, they offer the kids and the Happy Meal, you know, different opportunities. So there are healthy options available. They're not necessarily marketed with the vigor you know, of some of the more unhealthy choices, but do you, do you see the fast food industry coming along a little bit better? I actually, I actually do. You know, there, there, there are some, some things that have to be considered, and that is the fast food industry is going to do what people want. Right? So if nobody buys their healthy things, they're not going to continue with them and they're not going to market them. But it takes well over 20 years from the time something becomes fact until it is absorbed into the consciousness of the public. And we saw that. We saw that with smoking. We knew in 1970s, you know, that, and even in the 60s that smoking was dangerous. But it took many, many years, decades, to get that in the consciousness. The green movement. You know, we've known for about all these things happening, but we've just moved into it. And I think this eating and lack of exercise is now getting people's attention. And so I do think that the fast food places are offering more. Now what we have to do is make sure that we actually buy those things. Mm -hmm. Uh, changing the subject a mm -hmm. little bit, um, the Women's Health Forum, yes. always a favorite event for this show, mm -hmm. uh, usually in the fall. I guess the planning has started for this year. Yes, we started in January. We're well on our way. We've got some really neat uh, venues where we're doing it. We're trying to, to combine to have a little bit of fun for people when they, uh, as they get their uh, information and their medical information. So we've got new doctors and we've got programs and we're very excited about it. Any big name? Well, I'm not divulging any of oh, that at secret. this point. Oh, secrets. Okay. <laughs> when we get closer, then right. we'll talk about but we that. Can, we can guess that there will be. We will have a keynote speaker. Mm -hmm. We always do. We look forward to that, to um, kick that off, and, mm -hmm. and we're working on it. We're learning more about sleep and how important sleep mm -hmm. can be to health. Okay, so at what point do you tell one of your patients, you know, you probably ought to get more sleep? What are the symptoms of, of not getting enough? 
Well, first of all, sleep is variable for various people. One of the ways you can figure out how much sleep you actually need is to go to bed and wake up without an alarm. Now, it's best to go to bed at the same time each night and get up at the same time because when people um, deprive themselves of sleep all week and then on the weekend they sleep in, it's essentially like jet lag. They've sent themselves to one of the coasts and their body doesn't respond that quickly. Um, so you can do that test by going to bed at the same time and seeing what time you wake up naturally. That will give you an idea of how much sleep you need. Um, and that we're finding a great portion of our adult population and a number of our kids are deprived of sleep. That can lead to heart problems, it can lead to high blood pressure. People tend to think of sleep as something that you're just doing, you know, there's nothing happening. But it's restorative. Your body is really working during that time. So we really do need to pay attention mm. to sleep for patients. And, um, and you know, again, pills are not always the answer because the pills are habit forming and sometimes they don't put you into such a deep sleep. Sometimes we need them, but many times there are websites on sleep hygiene, things you can do that work as well as the pills to help yourself to sleep better. How about physical appearance affecting sleep? Can, can you actually look at someone and say, yeah, they need more sleep? I think you can look at people and see their overall demeanor, um, that they are dragged down, yes. Now, I don't really know if you can actually look for physical features of it, but you can, you certainly can tell when you're feeling uh, tired, your whole demeanor is just kind of down, and I think that is something that is noticeable. Well, <clears throat> I read an article uh, recently, I think it was in Scientific American or something like mm -hmm. that, that uh, Amanda had picked up for me some light reading uh, <laughs> uh, about the brain uh, when you're asleep, kind of being cleaned, kind of being cleansed like a hard drive on your computer, getting cleaned up, and that sleep provides a beneficial effect to the functioning of your brain. I really think that's true. I absolutely think that's true. We're just beginning to understand better function of the brain and the immune system in the brain and how that contributes. So um, I certainly would, would see that as a possibility. It's like, you know when you have a cold and, and you just don't feel like seeing anybody and you want to stay away and you just want to stay in bed? Um, that is something that is called sick behavior. And the immune system in the brain, because there's a separate immune system, the immune system in the brain becomes activated and there are reasons that that happens. Number one, it's going to make you stop doing what you're doing so that you can allow your, your your body to recover from the virus and number two it keeps you away from other people so you're not spreading it all along so we're just now beginning to understand um, the immune system of the brain you know we've talked about the mind-body connection but now we're looking also at the body-mind connection the signals that come from the body that trigger these things in the mind and the interesting thing about that sick behavior if you think about it, it sounds like something else depression you know, I don't want to do anything, I don't want to see anybody, I'm just so tired. And so the pharmaceutical companies are looking at various therapies that might affect these parts of the immune mm -hmm. system, so it might help with depression because somehow the brain is, is seeing that um, depression and its sick behavior and they're combined. Dr. Marianne Bowman, today's guest on The Verdict. We'll be right back with another segment with Dr. Bowman. thing that has made the most sense for me is realizing that I am still an educator and that is what I do at the Chickasaw Nation. I'm Dr. Amanda Cobb Greetham. I'm a historian and I'm Chickasaw. The Chickasaw Cultural Center is amazing. It is a very, very special place devoted to the sharing and to the celebration of Chickasaw history and culture. State-of-the-art technology exhibits that are not like anything I've ever seen. The Spirit Forest is incredible and you feel as if you have actually just walked into a forest with huge trees all around you. It's timeless and yet it's sort of also representative of our time depth to really just sort of reach through time and touch the past. By the end of the exhibits you really have a sense of Chickasaw cultural and political resurgence and the extent to which we are a healthy, dynamic and vital tribe today. Chickasaws have always been an inclusive people. This is something for the whole community and for the state of Oklahoma. I don't want to hope for the best. I want to become it. I want you to see my potential. Because I can be more than average. I can be amazing. Because I know the hard way and the right way are one and the same. I will make you proud. And surpass even my own expectations. I will lead. I will lead. I will lead America's energy future. 
Oklahoma's oil and natural gas industry. Proud to equip Oklahoma students for greatness. When you have something important to communicate, it becomes clear that there's a lot of competition for your audience's attention. So how can your message stand out and actually resonate with your audience? Legal Graphics has the answers. The team at Legal Graphics will work with you to plan, design, and even test your presentation to ensure your message will be heard and remembered. Call Legal Graphics today to schedule an appointment. The readiness is all. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett, Kent Myers, and our guest, Dr. Mary Ann Bowman. Uh, you're still in practice. I don't know that necessarily yes. people see you on television. They don't know that, that, that you're a practicing physician. That's right. I do primary care internal medicine. I'm over at Integris. Uh, my office is on the campus of Baptist Hospital, and I share my offices with um, seven other physicians. We have uh, four internists, two uh, uh, family medicine, a GYN, and um, a rheumatologist. Mm -hmm. are, we, are you seeing any trends uh, in 2012 that maybe uh, hadn't cropped up before? Uh, in terms of people uh, with illnesses? Yeah. Um, we've been seeing a lot of upper respiratory stuff um, throughout the spring. Um, and uh, I think our allergy season throughout the spring really triggered a lot for a lot of people. Um, we see the usual, unfortunately, of the high blood pressure, the heart disease, the high cholesterol. Diabetes is really, it, it, we, we see in our practice just the epidemic proportions of diabetes. And of course, 80% of the time when you have diabetes as an adult, you have obesity as a risk factor. So that is just an issue that we deal with all the time. It seems like I see more people who, who, who think they might be uh, looking for a gluten-free diet. What are, you, what are your thoughts on, on that? You know, I have seen that in my practice as well. And I think, number one, it has become more um, evident and around. There's a lot more information on the Internet. Uh, number two, I think people are trying it. They're cutting out some of the um, the wheat products, et cetera, and they're finding that some of the GI upsets they have, gas and bloating, are better. The other thing I think that has triggered this is there are a lot more gluten-free choices. So people can try things and they're saying, oh, I'm doing just as well. So I, you know, that may be an issue that I want to address. If you, if you don't have any problems with gas, bloating, and these kinds of things, um, it, a gluten-free diet is not a necessity for you. Um, but it's not something that hurts to try. Now, people with true serious gluten sensitivities, they really have issues. I mean, severe nausea, vomiting, may lose 30 or 40 pounds. A lot a lot of people are just finding that they feel a little bit better um, and there's not a problem mm -hmm. with using because there are so many other products available. And these are the types of, of, of issues that can come on over time. You can you can not have a problem as a child and all of a sudden have a problem mm -hmm. as an adult, right? How yes. does that happen? Well, you know, sometimes the immune system becomes sensitized to things. Sometimes things just happen over time. And sometimes we discover things that, that, may, that, that may have been something that we just weren't aware of. Um, at the time. We see this a lot of times with the um, Epstein-Barr virus in kids. You know, in teenagers, we, um, um, they have significant symptoms where they get so tired, mono, et cetera. But kids get this and they have a little viral illness and they get better. So a number of these things may happen over time mm -hmm. or a number of them may simply be that it was just never noted that much as a problem. Is medical research making some real strides and if so, in what major areas would you identify? Yeah, we, we're, we're making huge strides, and it's one of the reasons why we have to keep the medical research going, because the NIH funding has decreased so much. So organizations like the American Heart Association, the American Cancer Society, are really major funding sources for the research that we need. And um, for in the heart situation, for example, or stroke, a couple of years ago I attended a meeting and a researcher spoke, and this was interesting to me. We've always said that after a stroke, um, and you go through rehab, the, what you're going to get back is what you have at six months after the stroke. We mm -hmm. now know that people can make improvements in their function up to eight years afterwards. Wow. So we're, we're learning so much more about how the brain can re retrain. We used to think when a, a brain cell died, you couldn't, you couldn't regenerate it. Well, that may be true, but you can recruit from other areas and learn again. I think the whole thing about stem cells and the diseases that will be able to be uh, cured mm -hmm. um, and also the changes that will happen with a number of diseases uh, is going to continue. I think the whole 
understanding of the immune system. You know, we really knew very little about the immune system until HIV AIDS in the 80s. And then it, as, the, as the immune system was destroyed step by step, we could see how it worked. So there are a huge number of strides being done um, using uh, that information about the immune system and all of the intricacies of it. I am just I am just so much in awe of how our bodies function. When you think about this, your heart is beating all the time and you're not even thinking about it. You're breathing, your immune system is doing surveillance. It's kind of, in, it's kind of an incredible thing. And with cancer, more and more targeted antibody treatments, so it's going right to the area as opposed to um, shotgunning and having to kill all the cells, good and bad, to try to get to the cancer cells. Does a person that wants to be active as a professional in medical research need to be an MD? No, no. Um, many, many of the, um, of the research studies that are done are done by basic science researchers, PhDs. And, that, and there are some doctors who do MD, PhDs, and there are doctors who do uh, basic research and also pharmaceutical research, uh, testing different drugs. But um, I would say the uh, a lion's share of the true basic science researchers are PhDs. And at the Oklahoma Medical Research Foundation, would their uh, staff be a, about like you've just described? Yes, I would say there are physicians who, who work also, especially in the rheumatology area and cardiovascular, there are a number of researchers there um, who are MDs and PhDs or MDs doing mm -hmm. research, but a lot of them are PhDs. And you know, it's interesting, um, with the American Heart Association, we raise funds. We have the Heart Walk, we have the Go Red Luncheon, we have the Heart Ball, and more the funds that we raise in Oklahoma, we get more funds back than what we actually raise mm -hmm. for the research studies, for the training, for the education. So um, it, it, it's a really giving back program that helps us right here in our state. Are there specialties that um, we don't have enough of in either Oklahoma or the United States? In other words, are, are there more graduates that need to be directed to, to certain specialties, or does Oklahoma have a shortage of, of any of these that, that, that you think uh, is, is a concern or maybe we ought to start recruiting? Well, you know, the, the hardest area is my area, um, primary care. That's where we have, that's where we really well, have a shortage in the country. Um, for a number of reasons. Number one, the, um, uh, the uh, training of residents is often done in hospitals, so they're more comfortable with that. They're exposed to the specialty kinds of things. Number two, uh, reimbursement for primary care is much lower than what it is for specialties. And when people are deciding what they're going to do and what they like, um, sometimes they may have $100,000, $200,000 worth of loans. So mm -hmm. thinking of that aspect of it, which is not a wrong thing to be thinking about, makes a difference. And then when you're in primary care, you really have to cover a whole huge scope. And sometimes people feel that they really would like to be in one area where they can really know every single thing about that particular organ system. Um, but back in 1980, when I was on some task force looking at this, we said the same thing then. We need more primary care. We will need more primary care. But until the reimbursement becomes a little more mm -hmm. uh, equal, because a primary care doctor can spend an hour with a patient deciding what's going on, talking about all of these things, a specialist um, with a scope that goes down is going to be 10 times the reimbursement for something. Now, I'm not discouraging that or disparaging that at all, because absolutely, when I have a patient who needs a study, I am so glad they are there. And our cardiovascular surgeons, our cardiologists are in the hospitals all night long, mm -hmm. uh, taking care of those patients who come in from the emergency room. Um, but I do think that nationally, it, it, we, we do have a shortage in primary care, and part of the reason that is given for that is the whole reimbursement aspect of it. All right, Dr. Marianne Bowman, our guest today on The Verdict. Yeah. Thanks Thank for you. coming in. You're Again, congratulations welcome. on your work in the American Heart Association. Thank you so well much. Well deserved. Thank you. Kent and I will have a final word when we get back. The good life comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. 
Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. All children deserve a life of hope and love. But sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. We lived on a family farm. We didn't have other families that lived close to us. Right. And uh, we wanted our kids to grow up being friends. You know? and so when they, when they did grow up and disperse, it wasn't hard mm -hmm. to acclimate to other parts of society mm -hmm. or being a friend. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political, government, and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers. We're wrapping up another show with Dr. Mary Ann Bowman. Not surprisingly, she's been recognized by her peers for her great work uh, in regard to heart health, and we once again extend our congratulations. A national award coming yes. to Oklahoma. National and, Doctor of the Year. And if, uh, you know, people just need to make better choices. I don't, I don't think it's necessarily a secret, uh, a lot of the things that Dr. Am, Dr. Mary Ann Bowman uh, uh, puts out on this show, but uh, she states it so well and so clear, and it just makes so much sense. When you, yeah. when you hear, hear, it talk, hear it coming from her. Um, she is part of uh, the medical staff at Integris. Their website is IntegrisOK.com. We have a website too. We'd love for you to log on to our website and talk about a, a guest that you'd like to see or maybe a subject you'd like to see us uh, investigate more thoroughly. Uh, our website is TheVerdict.tv. That's TheVerdict.tv. That's going to do it for this week's show. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you next week right here on another edition of The Verdict. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.